think you can, people hear me at the back there. Okay. Um, this is the uh, planning committee. Uh, before I start, I'll introduce myself. I'm Councillor Steve Bouts, and I'm the new chair of the planning committee. Just want to say congratulations to the former chair, uh, Anita Leach, who has, depending on how he's class planner, has either been demoted or promoted. Um, but she is now a cabinet member, and I've uh, taken over and was uh, elected to the Lesbian Council to do this. Uh, nice to see so many people here tonight. Um, if you can take your mobile phones off, we'd much appreciate it. Um, just tell me that we are webcasting tonight. Um, the records are being retained and, and being, being live. Um, I know if anyone doesn't want to be particularly uh, cameras on them while they're speaking or, or in the room, um, please make it more clear to us, but uh, difficult to do that. Members, please remind me to take the microphone on when you speak because the, that's when the camera sort of zooms in on you. Um, and my role is to ensure that we have a smooth running and we stick to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain the rest of the people here, um, council officers, so that's sorry to the left, are the council planning officers, highway engineer and environmental and health officer. On my right is the uh, solicitor and committee clerk. And down the sides are the elected members um, who eventually will discuss the applications and make the final decision uh, on the evening. Okay. Before an application it is discussed by the members, there will be a brief application, uh, brief debate, uh, sorry, a brief presentation from the planning officer, uh, a random presentation, and in the event of a qualified petition of 25 signatures or more. One representative will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. And I will try and indicate when you come towards the end of five minutes with a, a general reminder. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent are invited to make a similar presentation of five minutes. And again, I will tip the wing to them when they're ready to finish. However, if the petitioner has not addressed the committee, the applicant or their agent will not be invited to address the committee. A ward councillor can address the committee on behalf of residents, but once they return to the public area, they may not participate in any debate that follows within the committee. The application will then be opened up to debate, discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on that application. The order of tonight's uh, agenda may be varied, because obviously we want to deal with those with the most members of the public here for your convenience. If a site visit is requested and approved by committee, the matter will not be discussed tonight any further this evening and will be discussed at a future planning committee, normally at a month, month in a, uh, onwards. Members of the public here for that application could leave if they so wish to. So I hope the rules of engagement are um, understood. Um, I'm not sure which point I ought to be on the, the agenda. It's okay. So, the first item of business are those minutes that were the meeting held on the 13th of September. We have that moved and seconded and agreed. 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 All agreed. Okay, thank you. The next one is uh, Members Go to Conflict. Are there any declarations of interest on any of the items here tonight? Councillor George Davis. Um, th thank you, Steve. Um, having taken uh, advice from the solicitor, um, in um, item, item 12 of the case of court, um, going back to the 21st of May, I attended a meeting um, where the three ward councillors, myself, met with the housing officers, and the applicants uh, to look at uh, a design. Uh, and. I'm not 100% certain about the other part because it was then the land has been sold and um, it's obviously the big in charge of assets at that time and still I have to work as a I just feel that it would be better if I did not take part in this uh, debate. Okay, so you should be clear to get prejudicial, is that the right phrase? Prejudicial yes. interest and you go to leave the room. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other declarations? Okay, um, moving on then, we have the issue of site visits um, and requests for site visits. Are there any requests for site visits? 
Okay, Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Chair. Can I request a site visit for uh, agenda item 5, application 00286, seek Nicholas Pickeridge, uh, because of concerns that this development will have on the character of the area to be approved. I think it would be beneficial for members of the committee to see the impact uh, of themselves. Okay, for, for formality's sake, so someone prepared to second that request. Is that agreed, Mike? Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, another item which um, I think the committee has great concern over and um, would benefit from the site visits, given the long run saga around the issue of HMOs. Um, I'd actually prefer a site visit for that item number nine, but I have a second for that. Okay. okay. So we agree site visits for item number five and number nine. So number five is St. Nicholas Spiffy Rich, if you're here for that. Sorry for the wasted journey. Um, item nine is the uh, 45 Corporation Road. So they're the site visits. I will be asking uh, about any <coughs> preemptive site visits or visits, uh, but I have to do that on the AOB. Uh, these are concerning some of the developments around the water. But um, I think the, the other thing I want to say and encourage, and haven't spoken to party spokes, um, if we know there's going to be a site visit, if you've just seen there, the members of the public back to trail all the way here to go home. If we can, Perhaps get me the habit, if you know there's a particular controversial application in your area, that we can have preemptive site visits. I'm not making any hard and fast rules, I'm just trying to see how we can improve our, our performance. Well, we that okay. 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 But uh, we'll keep you informed. Keep, keep Alright, confirming to the members of the public, item 5, St Nicholas Vickovich, which is what we just said. And item 9, 45 Corporation Road. If you are here for that, then you are invited to leave or stay and enjoy a pleasant evening at time. <laughs> okay.
principal policies of HS4, Criteria for New Housing Development, and HS7, Sheltered Housing Policy of the Rural Union Street Development Department. <coughs> the principle of the development of an extra care apartment scheme is established, and the scheme will contribute significantly, significantly to housing supply in rural and specifically help meet the need for the type of accommodation identified by the Council. Given that the Council can, cannot presently demonstrate that it has a five year supply of deliverable housing land, the National Planning Policy Framework directs that housing applications should be considered in the context of the presumption in favour of sustainable development. The site is considered to represent sustainable development. Therefore, the National Planning Policy Framework states that the permission should be granted unless any adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits of the growth scheme. The committee report considers the impacts of the proposal on visual and neighbouring amenity, its accessibility and impacts on traffic and highway safety and in relation to environmental matters. It concludes that the proposal will comply with the requirements of the relevant UDP policies and will constitute sustainable development, del delivering benefits that will not be outweighed by any identified adverse impacts. Such benefits will include Provision of a significant number of dwellings where the council cannot demonstrate that it has a five years to buy a housing land, the delivery of affordable rented extra care units, economic benefits of temporary jobs in construction and thereafter ongoing job service in the facility, bio biodiversity enhancement through the partial retention of existing vegetation that will be enhanced by further landscaping and uh, some ecology insulation, such as park boxes. Thereafter, suggested conditions will ensure that any potential adverse impacts are appropriately mitigated, for example, by managing construction activities, by condition 14, and ensuring the site is sustainably drained of condition 11. Therefore, the proposed development is recommended to be approved, subject to the conditions set out in the report and additional conditions which I'll refer to now. Following discussions with the high Further discussions with the Highway Authority, the site plan has been amended slightly uh, so as to facilitate a full off street lane line for refuge vehicles by moving out the fence that was proposed to further two metres apart. So, suggested amend, uh, condition two uh, is amended to substitute the site plan. And furthermore, the Highway Authority has recommended the imposition of a condition to restrict waiting, to, waiting on Wolfpack Close by the provision of uh, yellow lines at the proposed access for refuge collection vehicles in order to pre prevent obstruction. Uh, the condition will be worded as follows. Before any apartment in the development hereby approved is first occupied, a scheme of works to provide waiting restrictions on wood pack packet close at the exit from the proposed refuge base shall be submitted to and agreed in writing by the local planning authority and thereafter implemented in full. Okay, that's conclusion presentation. Okay, thank you, Dean, for that uh, presentation. Can I now tell you that there is a qualifying petition for this uh, application? Does a lead petitioner or one of the petitioners want to address the committee for five minutes? I uh, don't see anyone coming forward. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, um, the applicant will not be able to comply, as we explained in the room before. But I can call for a ward councillor to represent the committee. Uh, is the ward councillor? Yeah, yeah councillor Blakely would like to come forward. Um, for the record, just state your name. Five minutes, and I'll tell you. Tell you, tell you. Oh, it's unlimited. <laughs> I'll try not to give you too long to Thank you, Chairman Members. Can I start by congratulating you on uh, becoming Chair of the Committee, Councillor Hacks? And can I also start by thanking those members who attended the site visit on Tuesday? I sincerely hope that visit puts into perspective and gives understanding as to why local residents and local councillors are opposed to this three story development. Before, before I get into the planning side of it, just let me provide a bit of background and explain what appears to be the Council's headlong rush into railroading this application through the planning process. 
The council has signed the land to the for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds less than the market value of the land. The council has incurred a ninety-one thousand pound bill for clearing the site for our delivery. The council is providing a four hundred and thirty-nine thousand pound grant to help with the scheme, and the council has written to Home England in support of Alpha's successful application for a four point six oh two million pound grant. While the subject of the grants, Chairman and Group Spokespersons will be aware of an email that we received from David Ball dated 30 October, uh, pointing out that the applicants had contacted the Council to advise, and these, these are his words, they need a decision at the October Committee as a scheme is being grant funded subject to planning approval. The funding is from Homes England in the sum of four, four million six hundred and two thousand. And this grant will be lost to Whittle if a decision cannot be taken in October. And he asked for a preemptive site visit, which we had on Tuesday. And we know that's unusual because site visits are normally requested on the night of the committee, and then the application comes back the following month. So that's the reason for the preemptive site visit given, <coughs> given to us by the council from the applicants. So, being inquisitive as I am, I contacted Holmes England and asked if that was in fact the case. A call to response I received from Holmes England, Holmes England it wasn't. And, and I quote their response. The shared ownership and affordable housing programme from which the scheme you mentioned below is funded as a programme end date of 31st of March 2022. On Tuesday the site visit, I asked the representative of Alpha Clearing that if the application was approved, how long would the bill take? He answered 80 weeks. So, if the programme has an end date of 31st of March 2022, and it's an 80 week bill, then effectively if the application was approved, they would not have to start until August 2020, and they would not lose the grant. So, the question I ask myself is why did the applicant deliberately mislead the council? Stating it would lose homes in the grant if a decision was made not made in October. I've drawn my own conclusion, so I'll leave it to all of you to draw your own. <coughs> anyway, Chairman, we are where we are, so let's move on to the opposite report. On the 8th of August, in the email to Joanne Story, who was the nominated officer at that time, the three ward councillors, myself, Steve Rivers, and Bruce Berry, requested the application be removed from delegated authority. Yet no mention of that in the officer's report. <coughs> Why? There's just no mention of it. On the same day, I submitted to Joanne's story a detailed objection to the application, and I specifically requested in that email, and I quote, Would you please ensure my objection and my comments are made known to the planning committee members who will ultimately determine this application? Chairman, members, again, no mention of that in the report. So I have to ask the question, why are planning officers ignoring elected members' requests? If we move forward to the section that deals with the principle of development, the planning officer we first began to call being a residential care facility. Sadly, the officer is wrong. It was, in fact, a respite centre for adults who suffered from complex physical conditions. On paragraph two of the section, housing implications, the officer states that UDP policy HS4 is consistent with national policy in that it permits residential development within the primary residential areas, subject to criteria that requires the development to relate well, that says relate well with the surrounding and achieve the good standard of amenity. Chairman members, how can a three-story building with a huge footprint in an area that's totally made up of single and two-storey dwellings relate well and achieve a good standard of immunity. If we move forward to the section titled Affordable Housing, the officer in this report makes a case for affordable specialist housing for rent. Uh, we asked roughly when we had our meeting in May with, with Alpha Living what the rents would be. The rents that we were told on the night were, were around about £120 a week rent but there'll be a, a, a further £50 a week in service charges. So I asked 
affordable to whom? £170 a week. If we then look at appearance and immunity issues, the Honourable Officer states that policy HS4 sets out the criteria for new housing development on allocated sites and within the primary residential area. He says, in summary, this requires that new housing is of a scale, a scale which relates well to its surroundings and does not result in detrimental change to the area. He goes on to say that policy HS7 provides criteria for sheltered housing developers, which indicates that such income permitted subject to, and there's that word scale again, which relates well to surrounding property. He then moves on to section 12 of the MPP Act, which states that developments function well and add, add to the overall quality of the area, and are sympathetic to local character and history, <coughs> including the, the, the surrounding built environments. Again, I would argue that if approved, this development by its height, size and mass would have an unacceptable adverse effect on the area and therefore does not accord with UDP policies HS4, HS, HS7 and Section 12 of the NPPF. If we then move to the, the layout scale and design, the, the, the accommodation will have balconies, many with four balconies that will have people to sit out and some with Juliet balconies, which while not allowing room to sit out, still allows residents the opportunity to step out onto that balcony and in doing so, particularly from the third floor, have panoramic views over neighbouring properties and gardens. This is surely an intrusion into the privacy of neighbours whose properties have a boundary with the proposed development. Moving to the section titled Neighbouring Communities, the officer tried to justify the objections to loss of privacy and overshadowing by stating that habitable rooms would only have a secondary window which would overlook properties of southern developments and talks of intervening landscape. A window is a window in anybody's language and it matters not if it was described as secondary. It would still overlook from a three-storey height neighbouring properties to the south of the development. I'm going to touch on highways issues because along with local residents I am particularly disappointed that highways officers have no objection and almost when you read it see this development as a like for like with the former Gearsville Court. Gearsville Court did not have 59 parking spaces and therefore there's no doubt that if approved this development will only exacerbate an already extremely congested area and will add to the difficulty local residents already encounter with traffic on a daily basis, particularly egressing and accessing Gertrude Road. Chairman, members, you'd be delighted that in conclusion, and so we are not misunderstood, we and local residents have no objection to this site being redeveloped. However, any development should fit in with the existing street scene. And a three-storey development simply does not do that. The proposal is contrary to UDP policies HS4 and HS7, and therefore, on behalf of local residents, I believe you have sustainable reasons for refusal, and I respectfully request that you, as a committee, refuse this application. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Could I ask? Um, there was a fairly long preamble. Council of Ladies, uh, much of it was around reasons for we are a planning committee, and uh, I, I know there's a political history to this site, but I hope we will concentrate on the planning issues and not be uh, somebody preamble which was not a material consideration for the planning committee. Uh, only to uh, highlight that this is obviously a, a sustainable development because it's being sustained by grants and, and other issues. So it, the reason why it can be described as sustainable is because it is being sustained uh, and, and financed from other sources. Can we now move on to members then, please? I've got Tommy, get the list going. I've got David, Ian. Can I start off with David? Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, there's absolutely, no, I'd like to preempt my remark by saying there's absolutely 
and no doubt that we do have a need for development of this type, and I am fully in support and principle of that happening. Um, from a purely pers personal perspective, I thought the site visit was ex absolutely essential, and I'm glad we decided to go and visit the site. My first perception as a former builder was that it was a large open site surrounded by houses that were well spread out, and it gave the appearance and impression of being a sort of a nice, decent, open plan area. Um, and from that perspective, I did note, after all the debate had gone on on the site, there was one lady at the end of the visit who really made the point on behalf of what everybody had said on the site. That was that the residents believe this is just too big. Now, that's not a reason in itself for refusal, quite clearly, and I understand that. But what I would like officers to do, if you could please, just put up in plan an elevation of the building that's proposed, while I'm just continuing with what I'm very briefly going to say. Um, in fact, to avoid being over-influenced by the people who were on the site or what was said on the site, I took the trouble to visit the site the next day and spent about half an hour there looking around from various directions of what was there. And as I said, it appeared to be um, an interesting site and a much needed facility, but that compared with what was there previously, which is a single story dwelling, a single story development that provided essential services at the time, that I'm afraid to me, and to use a, a well known, a slightly hackneyed building term, a little bit of a the landscape. I think it's too big, I think it's out of character with the area. And one of the things we do need to do when we approve developments is to make sure they are within the carriage of the area and they're not seen to be totally alien to the environment that's surrounded. And as has been said by the officers and by prospectively, clearly this is surrounded by one or two developments uh, sites, two development residential dwellings, which have fairly large attractive buildings. But it's quite an attractive area, it's quite nice. And I think this I'll repeat my word, it's just going to be a blot of the landscape. So my concern is that whilst we need facilities like this, there's absolutely no doubt about that. I think because this is too big and out of character of the area, we should not be supporting its continuation. That's really all I have to say at the moment, Chair. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, can I just add to the comments earlier? I found the site visit very useful. <coughs> Um, I think not least because of the elevations from the properties in Headington Road and Bimsey Close. Um, the officer um, in his presentation, Mr. Clapworthy, uh, made reference to the fact that there are predominantly uh, two-storey buildings in the area. Clearly, the properties on Woodpecker Close are primarily bungalows for sheltered accommodation. And the added impact, because this is on a, a, a sloping rest, um, elevation towards the Arrow Brook, if you're standing in Headington Road as I was the day after the site was the impact from Headington Road, you are looking up, you're not looking directly at a three-storey property, you're looking up at a three-storey property because of the elevation of the site. So it has uh, an additional impact that I think probably doesn't come across well on a site plan uh, as we have in this report before us. Uh, before I make some further comments, Chair, can I ask, on the proposal summary on the front of the report, it states that there are the applications for 78 one and two bedroom affordable apartments, as well as 195 square metres of office space. Can we have some sort of indication of the office space as a proportion of the whole site, please? Roughly. Uh, Chair, I mean, I'm afraid you have to bear with me on that because you know, the proportion, we're talking about percentage of now. <coughs> How do you want to express the proportion? Uh, well, you, I, I haven't, I, you need to bear with me, I can come back on that. Okay, that feeds on to my next point, Richard. Um, I, I think it would be useful to know the proportion of this application that is office space. Clearly, Alpha Homes currently, their head office is located in rented properties in Bromborough, and this would be a site where they would not be paying rent. Now, the application from Homes England, the grant application, um, as we've heard from Councillor Blakely, the grant, uh, the grant conditions of the grant would not specify that this had to be a three-storey, a two-storey or a single-storey, simply that it was providing a, a meeting a need. My concern is that this application uh, for much-needed um, uh, residential accommodation is also allowing through the back door uh, office space to be subsidised by the taxpayer while they uh, vacate rented properties 
at the same time causing additional traffic and massing of the developments uh, to the people living in this area. I don't think anybody would argue that there is a need for this kind of accommodation. I think the sticking point is that it's uh, three storeys, it's overbearing and overmassing. So I would be interested to know the proportion of the site that is for office space and residential. So I think that is key to this application. Okay, I'm going to make uh, Madeline, it's Madeline Cross. Thank you. Um, I've just got a question, Chair. So the, the point that Councillor Lewis raised there, is that a planning consideration? Is that something we would be taking into consideration as a planning consideration? I'll ask the officers to, to answer that because I'm not a professional planner, but um, you have, we have always been told that every application that comes forward is taken on it's exactly its own merits. We know what is being applied for. You have to come to judgment of whether you think that is is the demonstrable harm on enough material considerations to, to want refusal or, or is it of such benefit to that approval? So I, I don't know whether it, it, it's particularly relevant. There are a lot of points that have been made about what, what Alpha are and what Alpha are. We're not here to make judgments on the applicants nor the agents. We're here to look at planning considerations. So I wish members wouldn't stray into um, doing that. We are also an enabling committee, as we learned in our training. We do enable good development to take place, so I don't particularly think slagging off investors and, and developers is, is a particularly good habit. Okay, sure. I'm not going to take you again in and ask for the reply. Okay. Through you, Chair. Yeah. Um, I actually went on the site visiting. It's apparent um, when you look at an empty piece of land, it's a massive piece of land. And so when you look at 78 apartments going on, on the face of it, it doesn't look as if it's too much, but if you take into consideration the boundary lines to the size of this building, and I will point out on page 64 of the report, the, the layout scale design and landscaping, it does say that the proposal subject has significant objections related to the scale, layout, and design of the proposed development, stating, stating that three storeys high in an area which is characterised by single and two storey dwellings will be too large and overly prominent. <coughs> dominating and overbearing and out of scale in character with surrounding buildings and would thus represent poor design and be contrary to UDP policy HS4 and HS7. And the site has historically been used as a, as historically been a single uh, storey dwelling. Now to anybody to go from a single storey dwelling, which for this type of residential use I think is pertinent, Single story is much better if it's going to be used for people who are elderly and probably, well, in terms of wheelchair access, are going to have significant difficulties, I would say, in going up to two or three stories. Um, I do think we have a need for this sort of thing with an aged population, but I do think it would be much better if these designs were more pertinent, aged to the surrounding area, and also pertinent to the type of use that it's going to be, which is for people who will have difficulty perhaps with walking and who are aged. Most people who are older often downsize to bungalows, and so it's not it's not unreasonable to expect that these sort of designs are kept at least to one story, even if one and a half, but certainly not three. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I've got sorry, I'm gonna pop my mind up. I've got Councillor Brian Kenny. Yeah, thanks Chair. I've got a couple of questions. Um, the local councillor, Councillor Blakely, uh, made a number of points. Uh, two of them were that, first of all, that the land had been sold for I think 250000 less than the value. And also, I think he claimed that there's no need for this application to come before this committee this month. It could come sometime in the future. So my question on, on those two points are, is that relevant? To the, to the planning decision that we've got to make tonight. My understanding is that they're not relevant points, and you know, I just want, I want that clarified. And the other point, Councillor Elton, um, I think, said that there is a need for this sort of development, but he said it was too big compared to what was there before. Well, again, I'm asking the same question. Does, is it relevant what was there before? Surely we should just deal with the application on its merits. And not on the basis of that's what used to be there. So I'd like clarification on those points, please, Chair. Uh, Matthew, do you want to answer that one? Yeah. 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 About the sale of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sale of the land and. and oh, which one? Why it had to be built before the Commission for this one? Well, I can answer that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chair, should I respond to the first yeah. two, The first two points related to uh, details of the sale. And uh, the second point about 
comparing it to what was previously a nine-room material, as stated, you, you consider the merits of the proposal put in front of you and any other material considerations, not the sale, the cost, you know, financial deal, the uh, implications are not relevant. Uh, on the reason for the preemptive um, site visits, I was approached, as Councillor uh, Blakely says, by the <coughs> officers. I consulted with all those members of the planning committee, um, came to the view that given the history of the site, um, which has been well uh, uh, told by Councillor Blakely, that it would be of significant interest, and as Chair, I decided it would be better to have a preemptive site visit, as we knew it would probably be called for a site visit anyway. Um, and I made that decision but with the advice of the industry spoke this and I know subsequently then if you change your mind but I made the decision based on the advice uh, that I said. That's it. That's it. Yeah, um, the, the answer from the officers on the uh, office space, please. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Reading Chair. Um, it, it's 3% of the overall floor space. 3%. Well, big stewards here, and then we're going to come to a close, I think. If no one else is going to ask you. Sorry, I'm going to have to go again. Yeah, um, I mean, so, some interesting things for me. So, I mean, whether or not things weigh in your mind in time, which I don't think I was ever really concerned with some extra office space was, was moved into. It. Different. I think there was an interesting point possibly raised about the slope of the land towards Heavenly Road. Um, I had a look at the plans um, on the um, on the plan proposal, and it, it strikes me that the mass of the building on, on the on the plan is actually moved towards Woodpecker Close, so that the distance when viewed from Heavenly Road would actually be in excess probably of about 60 metres. But that's that, that's my estimate. Just what that. Uh, somewhere between maybe 50 and 60, just to be conservative um, on it. So the impact of that distance, I mean, that led me then, if you like to, to say to the committee um, what I was going to say, which is my concern, if I had a concern, would be about the separation distances um, around the building uh, to the other building, to the other houses um, in, the, in, in the general area. And the first thing that strikes is that none of the other houses actually in the in the general area face um, the building uh, in Woodpecker uh, close and in Gertrude Road. It's side elevations that tend to be facing the building with no habitable rooms. I can see a potential impact on heading to, uh, heading to the road um, when viewed from the rear. Um, but in general, I would have thought if there was going to be a problem with the idea that you're looking at a three story building, it would be to the front. Um, I was pleased to look on the website today um, where the drawing was actually put online and shows all the separation distances, which effectively saved me and Matthew to say what are the separation distances, uh, notwithstanding that we're not looking against that habitable room to a habitable room. And even looking at that drawing, I've seen 20 odd, 30 odd metre separation distances, which comes back to what David said and others have commented about the sheer size. Uh, of the site, it may very well be a, um, a finely uh, long uh, decision, but the way they seem to have orientated it towards Woodpecker, where nobody would be looking at the main mass um, of the building, and then side um, uh, appendages, if you like, down towards Heavens and Road, uh, I, th I think it fits, and with the separation distances, having not seen them this morning, um, give me the confidence, I think, to say, to fall on the side of, of saying that, uh, that this is probably an application that I would support. Okay, if I, um, <coughs> oh sorry, yeah, bring Sam in next, and then, you know. uh, Thank you, Chair. It's, just, it's a small point, I think, but it hasn't been one that we've mentioned in this. Uh, you, you talked about us being a committee that um, we were, were able to enforce the, the type of housing that we want to see on the world and several members have mentioned about making sure that we we find the housing that we need for the residents of the world. Um, if this is a, a, a development which is able to class itself as 100 percent affordable, I think that's something that we should be commending. Um, also in that it offers uh, communal facilities which I think they're mentioned within within the document here that are the type of facilities that perhaps would suit the population.
population of the potential development. And I, I just think it's worth mentioning on the committee that that is something that you know, we're worried about talking about, you know, is it 20% affordable? Is it you know, rounded down? This is entirely affordable and that's something I think we should be looking at. Uh, I'm not sure how this works, but I'm going to make some comments and I'm going to invite whether there's any reasons for refusal um, or and also, also to, to if a sentence one group, you're going to move a refusal. Yeah, sure. okay.